so I saw you already imported some of the tools that you need. So that's that's really that's really all we need here uh, for the autocorrelation function. So let's just have a look at that, right? And you know, one of the things that you already got there is function plot PACF. So there's actually two types of autocorrelation functions. There's the ACF and the PACF is the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function. So there's different types of autocorrelation and so on that we use. And, and the one that we actually are interested in, the one I asked you is basically called autocorrelation. And all this is covered. So, so the auto in a, in a sort of autoregressive model, and this model is called ARIMA, A-R-I-M-A. And the ARIMA model covers different types of autoregressive function. And one is the one that we're interested in is autocorrelation, but there's also some that makes the MA part of ARIMA. It's called moving average. Mm -hmm. So the AR of ARIMA is autoregression. The MA is what's called moving average. It's something we will look at later. And then there's also the I, which is called integration. It's the integrative part. And the integrative part is easy to understand. It's actually what makes up the cumulative sum. So, so if we have a time series uh, that is composed of a cumulative sum of returns, that that's the integrative part of this ARIMA model. And then we've got the autoregressive part, which is effectively what we've been doing. And then is another thing is a moving average part, which is basically covering what you call shocks. I'll I'll come to this later. It's not real. It's 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 not that different from the autoregressive, but it's a little bit different. It basically weights shock changes. So we look at that a little bit later. But what I was basically asking you to do is, is look at the autoregressive part. And that, that's covered by the partial autocorrelation function. And the way we do this for the SPY is we basically do spy.close because we just want close prices dot PCT change. There we go. And um, one thing we also need to do is because when we do PCT change, well, we got a few NANs in there. And so what we want to do is we don't want to fill NA. So we don't want any NANs in there because in many cases, those set functions, they don't deal very well with NANs and, and it's, it's, it's you know, they're often at the beginning of a time series or something. And so we want to make sure that we eliminate that. And so one thing we could also do here is instead of fill in A, because we've only got one line, we could just say drop in A. It's actually probably the better function here. Because if you introduce a zero, it assumes, oh, it's got a zero return. But, you know, that that's not really true in a sense. So so what we can do is we can drop those NAs. And then we run this, takes a little while, and boom, here we've got the uh, the result. And uh, it actually plotted it twice. But it's very interesting here. What, what do we see here? So you remember we had this model where we basically said, well, we've got today's returns and today's returns depend to some degree on yesterday's returns. Yeah. And so what you see here at the bottom is all the lags that we have, right? But most importantly, we see, well, you know, lag one, it depends to some degree on the returns of yesterday. The percentage change today depends on the percentage change of yesterday. And so anything that is outside of that blue area here is what's called statistically significant. Mm -hmm. So anything inside that blue area is not really significant, but anything outside is actually significant. What you can see is there's a few of the legs that are statistically significant. So there is like one, and then most likely, right, that, that like five here, that's something to do with probably a weekly difference, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, what carries over across you know, from one week to the next and so on. So, so 
I'm only speculating here, but that could be something that's interesting. And then you see something here at like 20, 21, that could be a monthly thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it could be a monthly autocorrelation. But it's not really true. I'm, I'm just looking at this and I'm speculating. Now, if we wanted to get the numbers out, so the numbers are basically the coefficients that we applied to our autocorrelation. So, so if we wanted the numbers, uh, we just get rid of the plot thing. We just go ACF, right? And then you can see here, so like zero is basically the correlation of, of the function with today, so with itself, that's obviously correlation of one because it's the same thing, right? But then the next one is a correlation of minus uh, 0.109. Yeah. Now, what's interesting is, let's just see if we can verify this, because what we have to do is we have to basically go spy.close.pct change dot drop an A, yeah, dot core. And now we correlate this to the same thing, mm -hmm. but we shift it by by one yeah so we go dot shift or we do minus one yeah it doesn't actually matter which side we go and look at what number we get minus mm -hmm. 1.097 mm -hmm. which is pretty much the same number that we have here yeah so it's basically the correlation of the returns with themselves, right? So effectively, what this does is it basically tells us, oh, okay, you know, this this is the level of, of autocorrelation that we have in the system, and you know, we calculate that. And and so, what we can do is, if for example we have an ARIMA model, then we plug in these coefficients, and this is how we basically model the autocorrelation of our underlying asset and then we could make some predictions of where the asset might go in the future.